Hey, it's Jordan. I'm here in Chicago, uh, here with a bit of a casual uh, roundtable of organizers, activists, and little old me. Uh, it's not, I think it's kind of like this silent emergency going on here. Every time I see a video from Chicago, it seems like there's an occupation going on here. Uh, so I'm here with uh, people from Chicago that organize, uh, lead peaceful protests, and also are, you know, uh, have done uh, the political thing too. I want to start with you because I know you got to go. Uh, William, you've been an organizer here. Uh, talk about, it seems like the police killings, I mean, it's not a new thing, but it seems like it's getting even more blatant and uh, careless. Uh, look, watching the Maurice Granton uh, video where they're shooting him from the back and he's on the ground and it looks like they're uh, almost like taunting uh, while he's on the ground. Uh, what should people know that are, haven't been tuned in to what's going on here? Um, yeah. um, this is like real weird, but it's cool. <laughs> um, I think that the police videos has been coming out. I, I don't think it's, what, what's the word that you, blatant? I think it's been going on. Only the only difference now is, is like in a, in a case of Maurice, we're getting it from a body count perspective. And that's something that I had to live with because that's something that we champion for, for transparency, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm like in this real crazy space because we fought for body cams to see what happens, but we're still getting shot, you know what I'm saying? And we're, now we're seeing it from a body cam perspective. So it's kind of it's kind of tough to deal with to watch it. I don't think it's nothing that's not new because you it's nothing more blatant than a 17 year old getting shot 16 times. It don't get more blatant than that, um, and we haven't saw anything as blatant as that. But the, the Chicago Police Department been killing people, been killing black men and women um, for decades. You know this is not nothing new. It's just now it's starting to be more screen on you know cameras and, and footage. That's it. The mayor here, I know all of you are not, not big fans, but it, you know, I, I, everything I'm reading, it seems like a lot of lip service. You know, the Justice Department came out with their report last year. He's been negotiating with the Attorney General, but like not a lot of policies have actually been implemented. And he continues to basically try and gentrify and beautify like 10 to 15 blocks while leaving the rest of Chicago to rot. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. Um, what's, in terms of organizing against the mayor, the election is next year, but uh, are you seeing anything as far as actual action from him, his administration? Obviously, you got the fraternal police here, don't want to move an inch. Uh, what, what part are you seeing from Mayor Emanuel? Nothing. We don't see nothing from this mayor, mayoral administration. We haven't been seeing anything for the past seven years, and I don't think we'll see anything in the near future. Um, Rom politics is not for African-American poor people. That's not his focus. That never has been his focus, never will be his focus. And I think that's something that your viewers need to know. And we're adamant about Rahm Emanuel does not care about poor black people in this city. And I think that his, his emphasis is to just focus on downtown and it, uh, communities like that, uh, Lakeview, uh, Ravenswood, Edgewater, um, communities that are not suffering from um, poor schools. You know what I mean? I live in South Shore. And not only do we have poor schools there, but we I've been in a food desert for five years. Not just me, but the 40,000 populace in my neighborhood. You understand? And he has no, him or the city council has, has just, no motivation to try to get us out uh, of these uh, these situations that we're living in. And it's not just police. It's just the livelihood of black people in this city is horrible, just period. From police, you could talk about the, the public housing authority here, the CHA. It's over 100,000 people on the waiting list. The surplus is somewhere in the hundreds of millions, right? But we have one of the biggest housing crises in the nation. You know what I'm saying? And there's so many different issues that we could focus on, the education system. We on the, uh, we're going on our fourth, third or fourth superintendent or CEO of the Chicago, you know, two had to step down. One was indicted for federal corruption charges. The other one just had to step down because the inspector general said it was ethical violation. But each one was appointed by Rom. You know what I'm saying? Each one was appointed by the mayor. So that just lets you know what type of leadership that we under under this executive administration for this for the mayor. But we have to organize. It is some great leaders um, that are rising up that want to try to throw their hat um, in the ring politically and make some noise. So we trying. 
And I'm, I'm still like having trouble saying this with a straight face because I just don't understand. It's almost $700 million that have been sent, spent by the city of Chicago on just settlements. And it, I mean, if that's not like kill them, cover it up, sweep it under the rug, I don't know what is. How much of that money and also the borrowing to pay for that money uh, could be spent on everything he just talked about? Um, well, I think that, oh, <laughs> my name is Keena Collins. Um, I'm from the Austin community on the west side of Chicago, which deals with a lot of the same issues that Will just touched on in the south side. I think that you, you alluded to it perfectly. When we look at, all we have to do is look at the city budget. When we're talking about how the city is prioritizing, not only is it 700, nearly $700 million that has been put into settlements, but in this new fiscal year that's coming up, the police budget is being increased by 3.9%. That doesn't sound like a lot, but currently, um, the police budget is 1.5 plus billion dollars. So um, we're talking about Chicago Public Schools. Chicago Public Schools needs three billion dollars to repair just so that it's actually teachable and people can actually go in. There are schools with mold and rats um, and holes and lead in the water. And so we're, we're talking about the city is blatantly showing us who they're prioritizing and where they're prioritizing, not just with their actions and the things that they're saying, but with our taxpaying dollars. So the fundamental issue that I have, people think that it's this war on police, but it's not necessarily that. It's that how are we, um, it's the guns and butter argument. Are we investing in the social good? Are we investing in improving the lives of Chicagoans? And the answer is no. And people on the north side of Chicago should care about that too because an injustice for a child on the west side of Chicago is you know, more crime in your area, right? So it's, it's not exclusive to one side of the city, but I would definitely say that the city budget shows the priority. And uh, is, a, is a bubble being created now because you have downtown and you know, I like the river walk, it's nice. But it seems like everybody in that area, it's, it's kind of like a little bit like New York City when, uh, you know, Harlem uh, people used to live uh, and just keep getting pushed up and pushed up. And everybody, I'd say, below like 70th Street don't know what the hell is going on in that world. Uh, is that kind of the climate here? Yeah. Um, my name is Erica Nanton. Um, yeah, I would definitely say like one of the big things, too, that's so blatant and touching on what was said is that right now they're proposing the building of a ninety five million dollar cop academy. And I have been in the street with you. I have been at City Hall together as we have literally been not allowed to enter a public meeting and systematically shut out of a public meeting as black and brown youth saying that we don't want ninety five million dollars spent on policing us. We want ninety five million dollars in resources and a, a lot of proponents against the 95 million dollar cop academy that are in current elected office their narrative is oh the city is never on budget the city always overspends on these projects so 95 million is going to turn into 180 million and that's their reason for not supporting the cop academy not the fact that whether it's 95 million or it ends up being 180 million where are you suddenly finding this money after you told us that you were broke. And they, I recently was in a fight with tons of students from four of the public high schools in Inglewood that were all being shut down at the same time in a poor black community. They are literally shutting down every public high school in one poor community at the same time. And then when they have gun violence and you see that cycle of violence, lack of opportunity, there is no connection between the systematic shutdown of opportunity, access to education, inspiration. These students don't have art classes, music classes, they don't have a paintbrush to paint with. They don't got a musical instrument to play. But then we wonder why people are feeling hopeless. And then they want to spend that funding. Rather than funding robust educations for poor children, they'd rather use that money to police and sweep the streets of the unemployed that they've created. It is evil and it is sick and it's a revelation of the priorities. And even those who claim to want to cause an opposition against this, who are currently running for office, even their narrative is off. Because they're talking about it's a problem because they're going to go over budget. Just completely missing the point.